Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. An avid cyclist dreams of turning his passion into a business. He consults his banker to help find the best path. Now bike wheels are being built, and all it took was a little push to get rolling. First Horizon Bank. Let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash Clint. Tonight, go with me to Revelation chapter number six tonight. Revelation chapter number six. Last week, we started on the seals, and um, we dealt with the different, <clears throat> the different horses and what each horse represents. We dealt with the white horse. It represent, represented the philosophies of the last days. Then we dealt with the red horse. It dealt with the policies of the last days. We dealt with the black horse. dealt with the prosperities of the last days. Then we dealt with the uh, pale horse. And the pale horse represented the pestilences of the last days. So is everybody good on what we covered? Any questions on any of that? All right. Tonight I want us to pick up in verse number 9 tonight. Verse number 9 is where we're going to pick up. And I want to deal with the fifth seal tonight. And it's the persecution of the last days. The persecutions. The Bible tells us that in the last days, the last days shall what? Wax worse and worse, right? And we shall face many persecutions. And persecution just doesn't come by somebody beating on you or somebody killing you, but persecutions can come in many different ways. Persecution can come in accusations. Persecutions can come in somebody trying to ruin your character. Persecution can come in someone physically harming you, spiritually harming you, mentally harming you. Persecution can come in many different ways. When Paul had the thorn in his side, God, Paul asked God three times to remove that thorn. What did God tell Paul? He said, no, I'm not going to remove the thorn, but my grace will be sufficient for you. And as we get into the last days, we are going to face persecution. And Paul counted it a privilege to face persecution. He glorified God in his persecutions. Think of all the different persecutions Paul, Paul faced throughout his ministry. And when you think about that tonight, we're not exempt from persecution. So we'll get into that tonight, all right? Verse number 9, when everybody finds their place there, say amen. amen. All right. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar souls of them that were slain. Notice this, for the word of who? God and for what? The testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood? On them that dwell on the earth. And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest for a little, yet uh, for a little season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. When we see verse number 9 through 11, we see a glimpse of the persecution that is at hand. We're already living in a day of persecution. Go to China and try to go to church in China. How will that work out for you? Not too good, right? Go to Pakistan or Palestine and try to worship the one true God. How will that work out for you? Not too good, will it? Go to certain places in the United States and try to worship God. How will that work out for you? Not too good. You'll go to jail. You could uh, be physically harmed. You could be spiritually harmed. Persecution today is very real in the church age that we're living in. And it's just a matter of time before we as Christians face persecution again. When you think about that, we could go back to the days of Hitler. And that's not a pretty sight to go to. When over 6 million Jews were persecuted, why? Because of who they were and what they represented, right? And because of that, we went into a war. 
to fight for them, the mass murder. We see evidence across the different days of different deeds. We go back to the old days. We had, uh, uh, what was that queen's name? She was known as the Bloody Queen. What was her name? She killed everybody. Mary. Wasn't her name Mary? Bloody Mary. That was her name, was it not? And she hated Christians so much that she crucified some. She burnt some. She killed so many different Christians. That was the reputation that she had. If you go back and read the Fox's Book of Martyrs, and I, it's been a long time since I read that book, it goes through the, diff, through the history of the church ages of different men and women that died for the cause of Christ. We wouldn't have our Bible today had it not been for the martyrs that stood for the Word of God. When you think about that, the first Bible that we had, the first Bible that when it was printed, the man that printed it was burned at the stake for translating the Word of God from Greek and Hebrew to English language. And during his burning, Someone, he, not someone, he threw out one of the word of God. The Bible was being used as his kindling for his fire, okay? And during that time, his ropes break, and he picked up a Bible, and he threw it out, and someone else grabbed it and took it and kept reprinting the word of God, and they were persecuted, and the chain of effect went on. Pretty soon, during that same time frame, England slacked up, and England said, quote, we will let you have one Bible per town, and guess where it'll be? It'll be chained to the pulpit of your local church. And that was the only Bible in the town, chained to the pulpit. We're in a day and age now that we can get the Bible on our phones, our computers, on, we can get it virtually anywhere. But sometimes we take it for granted, but think about those that were persecuted for the word of God. Think about today, if you stand for what is right, the persecutions that take place. You speak out against homosexuality. You speak out against different sins. We become persecuted for that, right? They want to have their riots. They want to have their wars. They want to come out and they want to have their parades. And all of that is okay, but when you stand up and say, hey, that's not right, that is wrong, that's not biblical, what will they do? They will fight. They will want to persecute. And that's a dangerous spot to be in as Christians. But I'm glad to know today that all throughout the corridors of persecution, God always had a remnant of people to carry on his work. In the last days, there's not a remnant that is left when you get back to verse number ten to, or verse number eleven tonight, God rewarded these that were give, were in persecution. He and white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until what their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed they were should be what fulfilled. The time of grace has begun to run out. And God slowly, through persecution, at this point, is taking out his light from the people that are in darkness. That's a scary thought to be in. A candle doesn't just go out on its own, but it slowly burns out. And when you think about that today, when God's dispensation of grace begins to end, he will slowly take out his light so that darkness will fill the entire world. Am I right? So when you see that tonight, there was persecution, but there was praise. Verse number 10, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, O Lord, notice this, holy and what? True. They seen his holiness, but they recognized his trueness. When I think about recognizing his trueness tonight, they found his trueness in his salvation, right? But not only that, they found his trueness in, their, in his grace. He found his trueness in his promises that he would never leave us nor forsake us. They found their trueness in the reward that they received when they entered into heaven. They found him as true. Dost thou not, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? They wanted judgment. 
And God says, I will take care of it in my time. Moving on tonight. Everybody good on that seal, the persecution? All right. Verse number 12. Verse number 12, the persecution of the last days. And then I want to deal with the panic of the last days. There's actually seven seals. Seven in the Bible is the number of completion. And guess where we'll find that seventh seal? I believe it's in chapter number seven, if I ain't ahead of myself. Maybe chapter number eight. All right? The panic of the last days. Preacher, where do you see the panic? Go with me to verse number 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. That'd be enough to cause panic, would it not? And the sun became what? Black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as what? Blood. Now that would be a scary thought to be in, and a scary place to be in. And the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as the, as the fig tree casteth forth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll, when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Hold up right there in verse number 15. We're getting in that day of panic. We're already there. When COVID hit, everybody what? Panicked, right? And had a right to, and I understand that. We hear of panic when it comes to our stock market. We hear of the panic when it comes to food shortages and different shortages that we have today. But think about a panic when there is no Holy Spirit on this earth. There's no peace on this earth. Think of the panic that we faced on 9-11 when the Twin Towers were hit. Everybody panicked that day. I remember that day very well. I can tell you what we did that day. We didn't have a TV. I grew up in a home we didn't have TV. We barely had internet. And on that day, we went to Walmart. This is no lie. And at that time, Walmart live-streamed all the cable channels. Y'all remember when they did that instead of running the loops? And Walmart... We went to Walmart, and we stood in the TV aisle for like two and three hours and watched what happened on 9-11. And my dad bought like 20 boxes of shotgun shells that day out of panic and fear because you didn't know what was going to happen next, right? Every man ran and hid themselves. You think about this, that in the, in the tribulation period, which we're on the verge of here, the earth is full of chaos, right? You can't buy or sell unless you've received the mark of the beast, right? We know that we're not going to receive it. We'll be gone before then. And those who didn't receive the mark are in panic because they're running out of food. They're running out of supplies. They're running out of everything. And now all of this other stuff is happening. So what do they do? They run to the non, what's the word I want to look, populated places. And says we will find peace there because no one else will be there but us. But there's a problem with that. Your problems follow you. You cannot outrun your problems. So they run and hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Never forget, we went to Chimney Rock when I was a kid. And my mom always hated going there. She hated hiking. My dad always thought it was the greatest thing in the world. We was little. Daddy would be way ahead up here. Me and my sister would be in the middle. My sister halfway up would start crying. Mom ended up carrying her most of the way. It was bad. Anyway, we went one time and Mama said, we don't need to go. We was on our way home from vacation. Mama said, we don't need to go to Chimney Rock. They said, oh, I want to go. I want to go. I want to go. So we went. Mom said, I believe it's going to rain. No, nah, it ain't going to rain. That's what Daddy said. We got halfway up Chimney Rock, and the worst thunderstorm of my life came up. And we were in the middle of this trail, and do y'all know where we went? For some reason, we were close to this rock that had an opening about this tall, 
And it went back, and we went in there and waited out that storm. And when we was in there, my mama looked at my dad and said, I told you that if we wouldn't have came here today, and I said, oh, God, we're going to die. <laughs> this rock's going to fall on me. I'm going to die. My mama fussing at daddy's going to be what the last thing I hear. But they hid themselves there to hide from their panic. Notice this. And said to the mountains and the rocks, what? Fall on us. Now we have to remember this time, death is fled. Death is nowhere to be found. Right? We're in the, we're in the middle of the tribulation. There's no grace. There's nothing. And hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. And notice this, and from the wrath of the what? Lamb. Who's that lamb? It's God. Even your atheist at this point will recognize that God is real. Imagine sitting on a church pew week after week, month after month, year after year, and not accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And during this time... You're sitting in a cave in a mountain, or a den in the mountains and you realize that what you have heard all your life is true and you failed to accept it. And at this point you're saying, God, just kill me now. No, death has fled. Notice this, verse 17. For the great day of his wrath has come. Who shall be able to? To what? Stand. No one. At this point, you're under the wrath of God. This ain't, very, this ain't a very pretty picture, is it? The wrath of God. When you think about the wrath of God, you see the cause of the panic. You see the completeness of the panic tonight because they recognize his wrath has come. It's completed. They realized that the Bible wasn't wrong, that they were. Moving on tonight. Everybody good with chapter number six? All right, we're good. Let's go to chapter number seven, Cassidy, if you don't mind. We're going to deal with the great multitude in chapter number seven. Let me get there. Everybody go to chapter number seven. We'll get started in chapter number seven tonight. Everybody good? All right. Now I want us to look at the recording of the seals. When we think about this tonight, I want us to look, number one, at God's providential care. Preacher, what do you mean here tonight? Let's go to verse number one. Everybody in chapter seven, verse one, if you're there, say amen. amen. All right. And after these things, now we've seen all this horrible stuff. Last Wednesday night, can I pick on you, Miss Joanna? Last Wednesday night, going out the door, Miss Joanna said, Preacher, I know Revelation is dark and gloomy, but can you please find something positive to say? <laughs> I said, there's nothing positive to say other than, and i got to think about that all the way home. We're not going to be here during this time. We're out. We're in heaven. We're worshiping God. We're having ourselves a good time. And it's hell on earth here. So that is the good thing. We've been saved by grace through faith, and we're going to be out of all of this. All right, moving on. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Now, could you imagine that, being where there's no wind? Now, I've been up on the roof of the fellowship hall this week. I got a good suntan from it, too. All right, I felt it. But... The last two days we've been up there, there's been a constant wind back and forth. And it's been warm, don't, don't get me wrong, but there's been a breeze. I looked at Daniel today and I said, we're complaining about how warm it is up here. And these shingles are hot and sticky. I said, but imagine us being up here in the middle of July and there ain't a breeze to be found. Could you imagine going to the beach and there was no wind? That'd be, I want to... Uh, let's, go, let's go on Memorial Day weekend. Let's go this upcoming weekend. It's going to be in the 90s. All right, I looked at the weather at the beach. I thought about going, but I can't. I got too much to do. It's going to be in the 90s. 
all right? And going down there and sitting by the ocean, usually there's a nice breeze blowing, right? But imagine if the wind had ceased and there was no breeze. That'd be miserable, would it not? Nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with the loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God into and their foreheads. You see here tonight that God is carry or is is provincially providentially caring for his own. There is a calm in the midst of the storm. The four angels who are active in the judgments hold their hands. This morning in North Carolina, wheels are spinning. Determination is winning. A passion is now a thriving business, and it shows no signs of slowing down. How? The power of a conversation. Like the one Clint Spiegel had with First Horizon Bank about starting a bike wheel manufacturing facility in Asheville. Now it's not just talk, it's rubber meets road. First Horizon Bank. Let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash Clint. First Horizon Bank, member FDIC. Father, temps of fury and restrained by decree of God. Some of God's people, notice this, must be sealed before anything can transpire. What are you talking about can be sealed? Where are, we, where are we at? When we think about this tonight, we know that during this time, the stillness is so that the, how many people can be sealed? Anybody want to give me a number? That's exactly right. Now, this is the problem that we have with Jehovah's Witnesses tonight. They believe only 144,000 is going to heaven. But how many Jehovah's Witnesses are there? Hundreds of thousands. So how many of them is going to heaven and how many is not? You ever thought about that? Ask one one time. Ask them next time they come and talk to you about wanting you to join up with them. Say, well, if I join with you and only 144,000 of you is going to heaven, what happens to the rest of us that don't make it? Right? Moving on. The sudden stillness is so that the 144,000 can be sealed. If we went back to Genesis, and we don't have time tonight, went back to Genesis chapter number 19 and verse number 22, God said to Lot, I cannot do anything till thou be come thither. God held out his judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah until Lot and his family was delivered. Why was that? Who prayed for that? Abraham, right? He said, God, spare Lot and his family. Little, when you think about that, Lot's wife, what happened to her? She looked back and turned into a pillar of salt, right? Little Johnny was in Sunday school class and heard his Sunday school teacher talking about Lot's wife being turned into a pillar of salt. He said, that ain't nothing. He said, the other day, my mom was backing out of the driveway and looked back and turned into a light pole. <laughs> God will not allow the great tribulation to fully develop until he has secured and sealed the remnant of the believing Jews. He cares for his own. Secondly, tonight, God claim, God has a personal claim to his own. When we see this tonight, God has claimed us, right? Did that when he died on the cross for us. But now he's going back to his own people. The Bible says he came to his own and his own what? Received him not. Now the tribulation period is getting ready to begin. The 144,000 is being saved and sealed. God showed his care for his own. And now God is claiming his own. When we get there tonight, how do you know that, preacher? Go with me to verse number four. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And, they were se and there were sealed 144,000 of all tribes of the children of Israel. How many tribes of the children of Israel is there? Twelve, right? So if my math serves me correctly, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, that would be 12,000 from each tribe. 
right? 12 times 12 is 144. Am I right about that? Man, I'm good at math. I should have been a math teacher. 144,000. And of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. And of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Well, this answered it for me. And of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. And of the tribe of Aster were sealed 12,000. And of the tribe of Nephilim were sealed 12,000. And of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. And of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Isaacar were sealed 12,000. And of the tribe of Zabulon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. And of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. And after this I beheld, lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues. There's that word tongues again. That word tongues represents what? Languages, right? Stood before the throne and before who? The Lamb. Right? So we see God has claimed his own. He's got all the Jews here. The, the 144,000 were sealed to defy the Satan's secular, secular dominion. They are a reminder to him that every knee does not bow to Satan and that God is sovereign and is invincible in control. They are saved to deny the totality of Satan's spiritual dominion. Preacher, how do you get this? And lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and of people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Now let's go back. Where was another time that we seen palms? That's exactly right. What did they do with their robes? They threw them on the donkey to make a saddle for them. Again, this has come back full circle to everyone now that is clothed with right robes and with palms in their hands. What are they going to do here? Verse number 10. I'm ahead of myself a little bit. We'll go back and deal with this, all right? Well, let's go back. Let's go back and grab... Verse number 9. You want to break down verse 9 real quick? I got a little ahead of myself. I'm sorry. Their numbers were countless. The day of Pentecost was magnificent because 3,000 souls being saved on the church's birthday. That was the day that the church came into full effect, right? Christ was departed. God allowed revival to come. When we think about that tonight, when Nineveh re experienced revival, an estimated about a million souls were saved. When Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt, there were around three million people. Everywhere in the Bible that multitudes happened, God gave a number. But when we get to what happens when we get to heaven, the Bible says which no man could what? Number. That means there are many people in heaven at this point. As to their nationalities, we observe that not a single tribe or tongue is missing. On the day of Pentecost, God allowed every man and woman to hear the gospel in their own tongue. That word tongue there is language, right? Same way that we're here now. Now, when we deal with their Nature, they stood before the Lord. They're standing there, number one, in white robes. White in the word of God represents virtue. Palms here at this point represents victory. In chapter number six, he gave unto them what color robes? White robes, right? They were waiting on the rest of their brethren to get their with them. At this point, we're all together, right? And we have the palms. The palms here represents the victory of what they have overcame. The world said, we're going to kill them off. We're going to persecute them. And God said, that's fine. 
But what was it? Paul said, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Tonight we know that God has overcame death, hell, and the grave. For us to be with, for us to live is Christ and to die is what? Gain. Moving on tonight. Now let's notice in verse number 10 what they were saying. And they cried with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. Number one, they were praising God for his grace. They said here, salvation to our God. They went back, I believe, in their memories to the day that God saved them by his grace. How they accepted, how they accepted him by faith. No doubt they remember the very first time that they heard the gospel and it all made sense. And they said, God, thank you because, God, we could be left on the earth experiencing what the rest of the world is experiencing. Not only that, but they thank God for his government. We're going to stop close to here tonight, all right? They thank God for his government. Why do they thank God for his government? They said, which sitteth upon the throne. Remember back in chapter number 6, they cried out, While God does now not avenge the bloodshed, pretty much. Now they're here, and they're thanking God for his government, realizing that he has everything under control. Moving on. Now do they think about God for his government? Again, they go back to salvation and unto the what? Lamb. Why thank God for the Lamb? The lamb was slain before when? The foundation of the world. The lamb came in man form by the name of Jesus, went to the cross, died for all of our sins. Why did they thank him? Because they were martyred. They're in heaven not because that they were martyred, but they are in heaven because they accepted the gift of salvation. Does that make sense tonight? What the world thought that they were doing for evil, they were actually doing for good. Remember when Joseph looked at his brethren and said, what y'all meant for evil, God meant for good? What the world, with Stephen, was stoned to death. What Paul and the rest of that crowd standing there, or Saul at the time, who later became Paul, was standing there watching Stephen die. And what they meant for evil, God meant for good for Stephen. The testimony of Stephen lived on. They know that they came through great tribulation and storms of life, not because of their works, but because of the Lamb. Verse number 11, And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing, glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be unto our God. Notice this, forever and ever, amen. We see here that these men and women didn't worship themselves for what they had been through, but they worshiped God. We must remember, and I'm going to quit right there tonight. We'll pick up next week in chapter number 7. Mike, will you go get trail off? We must remember tonight that the reason we make it through what we make it through is not because of ourselves, but because of God. And we also must remember that if we will stay true to God, he will always stay true to us and that one day no matter if we die here on earth if we go to heaven by the rapture that everything that we have faced will be worth it all when we see him any questions any comments any concerns are we confused on anything we all good we're good say amen all right give us just a moment they're going to get trail life trail life has a small presentation for the church they came to me and asked me about tonight i knew what was happening and I forgot about it. Imagine that, me forgetting something. A million things on my mind and I forget something.
Are they coming? Okay. It'll take them just a second to get rounded up. But everybody enjoying the book of Revelation so far? All right. We're learning something in the book of Revelation so far. I will say it is the most challenging book that I've ever studied. And I have to remember to take my time as I teach it because I get to see it Monday evening, Tuesday evening, and absorb all of it. I read it, and then I reread it, and I put it all together Tuesday evening and get it processed for Wednesday night. And I remember what takes me four or five hours between Monday and Tuesday evening that I only have 30 minutes to an hour on Wednesday night to get out. So I have to slow down sometimes. So if I ever go too fast, tell me, okay? Because I don't want to leave this in the dust. Are they, are they back there yet? They're coming. Do I need a filler? Okay. All right. We had a good day in the food pantry Sunday. We got 47 boxes Sunday in the food pantry. For this year, let me see right here. For this year so far, we have given out 255 boxes of food. And that would equivalent to feeding 1,020 people in the food pantry this year. God's been good. Oh, they were? Well, good. So we'll keep giving that out. Um, I thank God for that. We've not had a month under 40 all year. And last year we had several months under 40. So it's taken off. This time I'd like to ask Mr. Charles Jolly and Trail Life Troop 274 to make their way to the front. If y'all want to line up across the front right here. Speech. You can come up here. Charles. I think everybody here. can hear me without that. No, the live stream can't. Oh. All right, just line up across here. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Community Baptist Church for supporting us in this. Um, and the Trail Life Group. We are growing. We are eight months old. Um, we plan to continue to grow. One of the things we've been doing is collecting some canned goods for um, less fortunate people. And we figured this time of year with school being out, a lot of kids are not getting a meal because they're not in school. And so we've collected this food and we're donating this to the Community Baptist Pantry. And in three weeks, four. And this is what we wound up with tonight. So these guys are all learning skills for the outdoors and life. Um, they're learning about God and community and how to help others. And we have many more events planned. Uh, we have a Krispy Kreme donut fundraiser coming up to help us try to get some uniforms. Um, but again, we just are very appreciative that y'all are supporting Trail Life and providing a place for us to be here. And what else? So easy. <laughs> Use <this> mouth <laughs> I don't know if y'all know this, but uh, God called me to, to work with these boys, and I was working with my church, and uh, just coming into dead ends, and one day I get a phone call, and this guy says, I'm Jonathan Smith, I'm the pastor of Community Baptist, and um, I was like, never heard of you. 
And he said, well, I heard that you wanted to start a trail life group. And I said, well, I don't know you, so God must have told you. <laughs> and uh, we formed a committee, and here we are. And we have other boys who are not with us tonight. We've got 12. We just wanted to present this food tonight and tell you how thankful we are to be here. We appreciate it. Thank you, Let's put this in the pantry. Yes, sir. Just park it in front of the pantry door and they'll put it up for you. Thank you. Thank y'all. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Charles. I appreciate that. With Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, avoid, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus.